Hey everybody, Jake here, and today we're going to take a look, a quick look, at the Fulcrum Knives Eclipse. This is the Eclipse, that's the name of this particular model by Fulcrum Knives, with their adorable little owl logo. That's great and all. Um, real quick, this was a Kickstarter project originally. I actually backed it on Indiegogo, where they had like kind of secondary funding. Um, so that's where I picked this up. This is the copper version. And this is going to be a slight review, but to be honest, it's going to be a bit of a rant as well. Um, just to get some quick stuff out of the way, we'll go and do a size comparison. We're going to open that up and sit right down here. Now, this is a small knife, and it's meant to be. We're going to compare it right here to the Victorinox Classic, which in overall length and blade length is longer than this. However, this blade is much stouter, much thicker stock. Here it is next to the Boker Urban Trapper Petite, which is probably pretty similar in blade stock, but again, much thicker. Um, this knife doesn't feel quite as durable as this one does, but as far as, you know, hard use, but they're not that far off. Next we have the Millet Knives Torrent. I don't expect too many of y'all out there to have these, but they're a similar size to the ZT0450. It's a 3.25 inch blade. So a lot bigger than this. And last comparison here is going to be a 3.3 inch blade. This is the Spyderco Spidey Chef. Absolutely dwarves this little guy. So again, this is a very small knife, and it's meant to be. Um, I've been carrying it in my that little fifth pocket, your watch pocket, coin pocket, whatever you want to call it. And it it hasn't been too bad for everyday carry. We'll get to that stuff in just a minute. I've been carrying this for about a week. And I, I have some major complaints. Um, let's go ahead and start with what I like about it, like normal. Uh, first up, the ergonomics are pretty good. Um, you can really only get a three-finger grip on this. You're going to put one of your fingers here, one of them back here, and then you can rest your thumb right in here. Something like that. You can get a pretty good grip on it. Um, your thumb doesn't come onto the slicing path too bad, although there isn't much of one there in the first place. Um, as far as like construction durability wise, it feels pretty good. There's a lot of fit and finish issues that we'll talk about, but overall, it's it's not too bad. The design is really what sold me on this thing. Um, it's very very interesting. This is a fairly small knife, but it's very very useful. You know, just in everyday life, this may be all you need. If this is all you need, that's great. And it's it's fairly thin. You can just toss it in your pocket. You really do forget it's there. And even this copper model, which is going to be a lot heavier than the stainless steel or the titanium models, is much, much lighter. Much, much, much lighter than most knives. Now, it is heavier than the Victorinox, but not by much, to be honest. Um, a lot of steel in this one. There's a lot of steel in this as well, but there's also quite a bit of copper, and it still comes out lighter, which is it's nice. The design, the size is also really good. It's 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 pretty nice. Again, thin, fairly small, pretty minimal. Um, let's go ahead and get into the neutral. There's not a lot here. The construction, how it's constructed, I guess, is kind of has, I'm a little am about. So basically, what you have, as far as washers, pivots, things like that. You have four points here, two there, two there. They're connected by these bars and those allow the blade to rotate and follow down to this path. There's a detent ball, which you can see right there. It does appear to be ceramic if that's of any concern to you. But basically how they have these constructed, it's a screw, a bronze washer, whatever link material you chose. They have um, Titanium, I believe stainless steel, and G10, and this copper here. And then there's another little bronze washer. Um, these are all free spinning and Loctited. So some people may have a problem with that. I personally don't see why you'd need to disassemble this knife. There's really nothing that you can't get to from the outside, but I figured I'd mention it. And this G10, um, is a little sharp down here, I think unnecessarily so. Let's go and get on to what I dislike about it, and this is going to be a bit of a rant. Um, I dislike the company's approach to this knife. I dislike the fit and finish. Uh, but I, I dislike a lot about the fit and finish, and I dislike 
the lock bar. All this kind of fits together. So I received this knife, and I know it looks very, very worn. It really does. But understand, I've only been carrying this for a week. This has not been near any other equipment. It hasn't been in the same pocket as any other knives. It's been sat in a valet tray, which is a very soft, plush material. It has no reason to be as marked up as it is. Now, some stuff is 100% is my fault. This patina here, right there, right there, and a bit right there. That is all me. It's natural. Um, I, I do have some stuff to say about that, but that can wait. However, all of this back here, all those little snail trails, those scratches, those scuffs, that was exactly like that the day I got it. It was a little dirty. It was a little scratched up. You can see there are some scuffs on the front, which were not me. Some scuffs on the link bars, again, not me. And one of the things that I find probably the worst, this blade has several chips in it, just out of, out of the factory. I've only cut tape with this thing, and um, it doesn't even do that very well because of the fit and finish on the blade. It's just not great. There's chips and things like that. when It, it doesn't seem like much, but when you're on a surface like this, this small, it is a lot. This knife is not sharp. It did not come sharp. The fit and finish is very poor. Some things that are sharp, these link bars, they're not grounded at all. So this stuff is just a bit of a nightmare when you're gripping it. And to a degree, I can understand some of it. You know, I can understand a bit of it, but some of it's just outright unpleasant. Um, right here where I mentioned this jumping, it is extremely sharp there as well. It's just, it's not, it's not good. But the number one complaint that I have about this knife is the lock bar. You may have noticed the lock bar on this, yes, as a lock bar, is copper. Copper is a very soft metal, I understand that. But they should have two. And basically when I got this knife, you're supposed to have to press this down to unlock the knife. Obviously, I don't have to do that. Now, I do have to press it down to unlock it, but that's because I'm very gentle when I unlock it. If you press it, you can see it locks up the blade right there with that little bit of, you know, so I wouldn't use this for heavy, heavy cutting. But basically, you press this little silver button here in the middle, and it pulls back that bar. Just enough for you to slide. Now, you want to push it very, very gently if you get one of these, because if you just press it, and then you have a free flowing knife. It can it cannot lock either way and the reason is that lock bar has been pushed out too far now that's not very hard to do if I press it very gently I can unlock it put it back that's fine and then pull it forward now if I press it a little hard and I'm trying to shut it quickly it's now not unlocking you know so <clears throat> they addressed these issues which really surprised me you know, I was like, okay, kudos to them for addressing these issues that are present on this knife. Instead of offering a refund or to take the knife back to, you know, work on them. And this is not one of them. This is a lot of them. They had a little video where, you know, you can, it'll try to help you. Um, so the knives are too stiff. They barely adjust that either. You know, um, they offer some replacements, some repairs, but not to everyone. And this is an obvious issue. As far as the scuffs, the scrapes, the dirt, um, they basically said, yeah, we had these for a few weeks. Uh, they were bound to happen. We think it gives it a handmade look. Sorry if this isn't what you expected. No, I didn't expect that, because I am, I'm aware these were worked on in America, but these were not made in America. You, Fulcrum Knives, did not create these. You assembled them. I understand that, but you had no reason to have this many scratches on the back of a knife that you're selling, that you're making money off of. This is unacceptable. If somebody pulled, you know, a spider co or bench made out of a box and saw this shit, they would lose their minds. They just would. 
They've also mentioned that some people have found rust spots on their blade. This is a 440C blade, which you can see right there. And they're like, oh, you can wash it with soapy water. It's fine. You, you, can't, you can't say that stuff. You can't say that. These knives were not expensive. I'll give them that. But they also weren't cheap. They had various versions with various different finishes. They have $30, $40, $50, and depending on what material you got, that's how much you paid, between $30 and $50. So why, why would you think it's okay for someone who spent $50 on a knife to get this? It's not okay. It's it's very not okay. When you when you pay a decent amount of money for this, this could be, you know, a, a good quality full size knife. I've reviewed a lot of knives on my channel that are great for fifty bucks. This one's not. It uses less material than them, and it's it's smaller. It's got to be cheaper to manufacture. You know, there's a a very low end blade steel there not super low end but fairly low end and this is what you come up with that's not okay um, you know they have other knives coming out and to be honest I'm not going to bother anymore with this company um, as an as an EDC tool this thing's great I'm gonna continue carrying it you know but as something that I was excited to receive to enjoy carrying it's not there the fit and finish are piss poor. The customer service is absolute garbage. And they put out a product that I'm not happy with. And I'm sure a lot of these people aren't happy with the, with their stuff. So, there's that. Um, if you're looking into picking one of these up, if you can pick it up, for, honestly, for $20, this would be a great, a great knife. 20 bucks, sure. But it's not $20, you know? It's it's not. It's unique. It really is, but the lock doesn't work properly. You know, a ton of fit and finish issues. It's just not it's not worth thirty dollars, forty dollars, much less fifty dollars. So at the moment I would advise against purchasing this. If they get their stuff together, work out the fit and finish, clean everything up. Sure. You know, go ahead and get one. But in, in this company's current state, they're a newer company. I hate to do this to them, but this is inexcusable. So I would avoid this. Alright, thanks for tuning in everybody. Hope you all have a wonderful day. If you have any questions about this or anything else on my channel, feel free to let me know. And if you enjoyed the content, feel free to subscribe. Thanks guys. Bye.